Hello and welcome back to Football Director with Nomadic Striker. You join us right at the end of the second season um, and we're going to do a bit of a transfer window special to kind of see who our Director of Football decides to sign during the summer um, and then we're going to have a new save coming out of the weekend and this summer is going to kind of define what happens next and how far we go with this save but yeah we'll see what Lewis Campos does over this transfer window and we'll kind of keep you updated. We'll jump back in and out um, based on what happens. So the League 1 awards are in. Um, and as you can see, Aussie Men has won the best African player. Which I think he won last year as well. He did. Maru Ricardi won top goal scorer of Aussie Men. Came third this year. 20 goals. Got more assists this year though. So that's one thing to note. Now that's won goalkeeper of the season. Our goalie was up for it. But miles off it really. Um... And then we get a chance to vote for the Un Gonframa manager of the season. So who should I vote for? So we get three votes. I cannot vote for myself. So I'm not going to vote for Tuchel. I'm going to vote for Dal Olio, I think. It's Dan Bretois, he deserves it. Then I'm going to vote for Gasse. And finally Tuchel. And we've got two players in the 11 of the season, Musso and Masrawi. And it's unsurprisingly dominated by PSG. So Ristich, I don't know. Left back at Montpellier. He's had a pretty good season. But Kimbembe, Marquinhos, Verratti, Thiago, Neymar, Mbappe, Icardi, all from PSG. And we now have our budget for the summer. So we've been hit the tax bill, 15 million. Tax bill profits, 46 million. Commercial summary, um, New Deal. Four new deals at the seven million. Um, sponsorships up to twelve million from eleven point six. All these are up apart from prize money went down. That's because we dropped into the Europa League, I guess. Top name on the back of the shirt is Aussie Man Batshuayi. Interestingly, Sanchez, Zerxi, and Yaziki. So, what does that mean for money? So our balance has gone up. So we were down like fifty. Now it's gone up to 85, but the transfer budget is only 29. But we do have loads of spare cash in the wage budget, which I guess could get moved around. But I'm not in charge of that, so what I say doesn't really matter. But one interesting bit of news, Pietro Pellegri could be coming in. I'm not really sure how good he is on this. He's alright, but he's worth 8.5 and we're getting him for like 3.5. And he scored 21 and 43 for Norwich, so that could be interesting. First big news of the transfer window Lille have signed Pietro Pellegri, 3.8 million. And they only rate him as three stars, but I think he's going to be good, right? So that's our first signing of the summer. Comes in as a squad player, he's on 60 grand a week. So, in comparison to the rest of our squad, he comes in as the third, fourth top earner. The city goes on 86 grand. Whew. Wow. Um, the other bit of news. Real Madrid in offer for Mbappe. 174 million. But, you know, it doesn't really matter because they're buying Harry Kane for 114 million. So they're going to make a profit. This league is stupid. And another transfer update. Campos has made a bid for Nicolas Otamendi which is different. So he's actually been pretty good this season, from what I can see. Seven average. A little tidbit of interesting news. We've set a new all-time average attendance record of 41,141. The previous was 40,593 in 2012, so there's something. The transfer window in France is open. Um, and Buddy Oz have signed one of our random players. We have signed our wonder kid, Matthias Palacios, who looked actually pretty good. Very good. Um, yeah, that's an interesting one. And Ivan Rakitic, who is not a wonder kid, but is very good. I think he could be very good for this league. Leading player for most league insides. Only our third best midfielder, but Sanchez has been linked the move away. That could help us change our formation. 
we will see. But we now have a very big squad. Good things are happening now. What is happening here? Luis what? Luis Suarez. <laughs> wow. Imagine. Yaziki. He's rejected it. Interesting. Um, so I've also fired my assistant manager. Well, not fired him, just not really his contract. And a load of other staff members left, including our inter-19s manager. And some transfer needs from elsewhere. Guess who? Yeah, PSG. So, they signed this dude, whoever he is. But then above that, they've hidden this news. That, oh, they've just signed Harry Kane for 114 million. And they signed Hakim Ziyech for 18 million. Um, he's probably on massive wages, I imagine. But one year at Chelsea and he's come to PSG. 165k a week. Yeah, we can't afford that. Harry Kane has come in for 114 million. Oh my word. 300k a week. So he's on 300k a week. So I just realised the Rakitic is on 140. Whoops. But our top three earners combined have the same as Harry Kane's wages. So things have been pretty quiet for a month or so, and it's kind of starting to kick in now. Kralinovic has been sold to Juve, he's like a young striker we bought last season, but he's Argentinian, so he's not EU, so we can't play him, even if we wanted to. He's gone for like 3 million. Um, the other big news is, Renato Sanchez, gone. 27 million. He's, he was all right last season, but he's a bit hit and miss. Like 7 assists, 7 goals... It was pretty good. Obviously, it's nothing to do with me. I would have kept him personally. But the system, uh, director of football has decided to sell him. And that has not gone down well with Tito Kera. So we do have Muadib who's going to come in to the first team. Who I think could be really good. So we're going to give him some time. And we also have Graven Birch and Samare. Samare was decent last season when he came in. And... There are some more, I think there's some more signings coming, so... And I promise signings were coming. One has. One has not. This has not happened. The Duma is not leaving. The one that is happening is Ben Yedda. So Wissam Ben Yedda. Who, my scouts reckon, was my best striker. So better than Aussie men. So the good news is, we now have a really strong... So this guy can't play. So he's foreign. <laughs> there are only like four foreign players. So he's got to go there on loan. Maya, oof, that's quite a big bid. But the good news is we're very strong on strikers. Benyeda, Aussie men, Batshuayi, Pellegri. So we've basically got to stay two up front. We're okay in midfield. Defence. Centre back is really ropey area. Badia Chile is good. And Kera is okay. But then the backups are basically Fuentes. So we definitely need a, at least a backup centre-back. And ideally a starting centre-back. But there's still a few weeks left in the transfer window, so I'm hopeful. I said that we needed a centre-back. Well, he's gone bought one. So, firstly, Rakitic is the new captain. They recommended Yaziki be captain, but... I don't like attackers being captain, so we brought in a Rakitic as captain. And he signed this guy. Bessir Omaragic, who is a Swiss 19-year-old centre-back. He's susceptible to injuries, but he's consistent. Good timing and challenge. And he can speak French, which helps. He comes in as our second centre-back. Um, but he's currently injured for three months, which is great. And now he's bought another centre-back. So Campos has gone and bought two centre-backs. I didn't actually tell him I needed two centre-backs, but he's now gone and bought Eric Bailly for 18.5. So he's blown 35 million on two centre-backs. I think this is a good signing. So he comes in as our best centre-back. I don't know where the other guy's gone. That mega rich, whatever he's called. Timothy Way has gone on loan to Dijon because he's not good enough. And we brought in Yuan Gorkov as our under 19s manager. He's not really that great, but I like Yuan Gorkov. Um, and topic of stuff, we brought in Oleg Luzny as our assistant manager. 
Campos has just signed a new contract until 2025. Nicholas Anelka has signed a new contract. He's been upgraded to a coach from an under-19s coach. We have brought in Phil Neville, uh, who comes in as an under-19s coach. And we've also upgraded Ivan Cordoba to uh, Los Cadu from under-19s. And we've got two days until the start of the season. So I don't think we should expect to see much else, but... The squad's looking pretty decent. So when we signed Bailly, it was weird that that new guy we signed wasn't on the comparison page. I just realised my board cancelled the deal because he failed a medical. He's out for two months with a slip disc. Uh, and he's apparently quite prone to injury. So we're not signing him apparently. So we saved ourselves 18 million, which must be why he went for a Bailly. Um, yeah, I had no idea. Didn't even see that. So there we go. <laughs> We've signed one defender, not two. So we're on the day of the opening day of the season. So I'm just going to do like a brief overview of what's happened in the transfer window. And then we'll be back tomorrow with the first episode of this season. So this is what our squad's looking like at the moment. Um, it's a lot bigger than it was last season. That's mainly because I brought a couple of young players into the, back into the squad. But in terms of transfers... So this season we've brought in 45 million, we've spent 44.5 million, so pretty even. In terms of outgoings first, Leo Jardim went to Wolves for 1.3 million. He was a backup goalie and didn't think much of him last season, or the season before in fact. Sho, who's an Angolan centre back or centre midfielder, he's gone uh, for like 600k. One of the big sales was Serge Aurier. Versalico came in last year and he's played better than Aurier so I just transfer listed Aurier and he went to Atalanta for 9.25 which is I think a decent deal a couple of loanies Juan Pablo Kranovic went to Juventus for what was in the end 6.25 million which was more than I realised I thought it was about 3 million um, but it's double that so we've more than doubled our profit and he's never played a game for us and he wouldn't have been able to because he's a non-EU player. So that's good business too. And then the biggest sale of the season so far has been Renato Sanchez. He's also gone to Wolves for £27 million. I think it's a decent sale. And then Gabriel's gone out alone because he's a foreigner. And Timothy Weyer just to kind of continue his development. He's not going to play for us. So he's gone to Dijon and he's already scored on his debut. So in terms of incomings, the first player to come in was Pietro Pellegri, young striker. I'm pretty sure everyone watching this will have heard of Pietro Pellegri. He comes in as our backup striker. Second was some left back that my director of football decided was good. He is in the reserves. Next up is Ivan Rakitic. He comes in on a free transfer from Barcelona. And he's going to fill the role left by... Um, left by Sanchez, so interested to see how he gets on. He's become our club captain. A very interesting signing is Matias Palacios, Argentinian attacking midfielder, slash, yeah, he's probably going to play in that hole. He's going to be the backup to Yuziki, I think. Um, gives us a stronger option there in terms of backups, which we struggled with last season. Diego Dallo is coming on loan as a backup left and right back, and also, for some reason, Pellegrini's come in as a backup left back. Probably didn't need him, but he's a decent option. Another big signing was Wissam Ben Yedda. He's come in for 11 million from Monaco, and he's now worth 26 million. So they bought him two seasons ago, and he scored 38 league goals, which is on par with what Aussie men's getting, and they reckon he's better rated than Aussie men. So. We now have four good strikers, so I'm sticking with the two up front. And the most recent signing is a centre back, Eric Bailly from United, also from United. He's come in for eighteen and a half. And I think he's a good signing. He, they reckon he's our strongest centre back, and we are really light at centre back. So, unfortunately, he's put up a knock in the last day or so. He's out for potentially two weeks, so he's going to miss the first game of the season. But I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Um, so we're kind of equal for in terms of transfer ins and outs, but we've definitely improved the balance and we've still got 13 in the kitty. So we'll see if anything else is going to happen in the transfer window, but 
my gut instinct is that it's not going to because we're we're looking pretty solid here we've got a huge squad so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video hit that like button down there it'd be really appreciated um and thank you for watching like we've got new content coming soon we've got a new save coming soon which i think is gonna be really fun and i'm really looking forward to it um but i think we're gonna run that alongside the leal save kind of keep this going because I want to see if we can achieve something, and we've got good youngsters coming through, so maybe we can. But for now, thank you for watching, and speak to you later.